We stuck to it. We stuck with it. And here we are, 100, 108 episodes later. <laughs> All right, guys. It's 5 p.m. local time in Bali. Happy New Year, 2017. <laughs> we made it to 2017. This is episode 108, an episode that has yet to be titled. I'm going to try something new. We're going to try titling these episodes after the fact. Okay. Yeah. So if you have suggestions, let me know. I'm going to publish the. I'm going to do a better job of publishing the show notes, and we're going to have a, a title that's actually germane to what we discuss. Imagine that we're getting our act together. Um, we are going to make it a good show. Hey guys, come on in. Welcome, welcome. Uh, today's Tuesday, January third, twenty seventeen. I almost said twenty sixteen. 2016 was like a skid mark, wasn't it? <laughs> um, we are going to talk about Corda. You guys heard of this uh, thing called Corda? This is the thing that R3 came up with at long last uh, by popular, by, well, by request. Somebody asked me to talk about Corda. Um, it's not just an open source project that will die a lonely death uh, while Bitcoin survives. <laughs> let's let's take a look at that. Um, we've got a birthday in the house. Whose birthday is it? What? Oh, are you, are you, are you, who's shy? Is somebody shy with their birthday? I'm not shy, but it's not my birthday. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay. All right. Well, when the time comes, I'm gonna out. I'm gonna out the the one who has a birthday today. So stick around for that. That's gonna be a little uh, a little party. Um, we've got some local celebrity news. Oh. Local celebrity news. Oh yeah, we have. <laughs> usually we have local news. Now we've got local celebrity news, uh, and we are going to revisit the war on cash. Yes. This is the war on cash conspiracy edition. Oh, oh. That's the name. oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe maybe, maybe so. Maybe so. Damn. All right, so let me uh, just share my screen here. I'm scaring myself looking at myself in the on the screen here. Somebody told me I look like St. Nick. Risky, like, <laughs> I can't right. wait enough. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, wait a year when it's like this big and I'm, yeah, I'm more gray. Yeah, All right. We got you on the, on the big screen. And those of you who are in the Telegram group, we can see you. Hopefully that will auto scroll down. Um, you guys help me keep an eye on that Telegram thing in case somebody chimes in there. We're trying to include those guys. Uh, today is... January 3rd, 2017. This is the filter number 108. Welcome, guys. Let's get things rolling here. All right. I don't know if you guys are aware, but we uh, lost a really good friend over Christmas time. Uh, a lot of you guys don't know this guy, but some of you probably do. Um, he was around from the very beginning. Uh, Peter Vanderlingen. We lost him on Christmas Eve. Yeah, really? Yes. Yes. He was... Uh, just a total light in the world, and he had uh, so much energy and spirit. He was here when we first got started and uh, found us a Bitcoin taxi driver and found us a, a Bitcoin homestay. And, uh, you know, he was here for like three or four months and was a, a big part of the genesis of what we do here every week. Um, he, he joined us again uh, at our one-year anniversary. He was back in uh, South Africa by this time. And I think he was already a little bit sick, although he didn't let on until the very end. He had uh, congestive heart failure. Um, and where? Oh, there's one more picture of him and Willie Wu driving through the rice fields. Anyway, he was uh, he was a great guy, a big Bitcoin fan, and I'm pretty sure that's why the price went up over a thousand. I think he's working the working behind the scenes up there. Are you pulling some strings? Yeah, he's on assignment. He's on assignment up in heaven. Uh, but thanks for everything, Peter. We love you, man. Um, and just wanted to, to remember him. All right. After today's show, we're going to go to Kismet, right? We are building a Bitcoin economy here in Ubud. We're putting our money where our mouth is, and we're going to uh, get the, the Bitcoin flowing. And these guys at Kismet are going to give us a 10% discount uh, on all of our food and drinks on all of our polenta lasagna and beer I tonight. I love their polenta lasagna. Oh, yeah. Their spicy margaritas and their oh. vegan gravy. Oh, 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 I haven't had the spicy margaritas. <laughs> oh, very interesting. All right. Um, okay. Well, we're headed there after the fact. All right. Here's our little Facebook group. This is where we gather when we're not together. Um, oh, actually. Oh, wait. No, that's not oh, right. Oh, she's telling what she's giving the message. <laughs> he the day he died. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it's related. All right. How do we do things around here? Well, we're, we are building a Bitcoin community here in Ubud, Bali, and we congregate here at this bitcoinsinbali.org. I wanted to make you guys aware that we've got some classes coming up. Bitcoin 101, if you click on the classes tab and go to Bitcoin 101, uh, you can register for our next class, which is Saturday, January 14th. Send us your noobs. Send us your green, know nothing about Bitcoin people. We will educate them, give them some Bitcoin. Uh, we'll uh, give them enough uh, info to be dangerous. Let's get some, some, some fresh meat in here and we'll uh, <laughs> show them what's what. We have a lot of fun on those Saturday mornings. You know, It starts at 10 a.m. and uh, usually it turns into a, a grand philosophical discussion about the nature of money. And then we go out afterward. So even if you guys don't come for the – you, you veterans, even if you don't come for the actual uh, class – Maybe you can join us for the after party. Uh, anyway, that's that happens on Saturday the 14th. And here is a little snapshot of our Bitcoin economy. This was put together by Willy Wu. This is a real-time graph of our Bitcoin economy. We went, we were slacking a little bit. This is the Christmas period. I'm thinking we are slacking a little bit. We are way up here over 10 transactions per day average, and now we're we're under 10 transactions per day. So we're gonna solve that single-handedly tonight at Kismet. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going I'm going to I'm going to uh, buy one item and then pay for it and then buy another item and pay for it. <laughs> buy another item and pay for it. I'm going to cook the books tonight. Trying to get away from that joke. Like Christmas was really weak here. I mean, should have had that over. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the price. For for those of you who who bet on Bitcoin going over a thousand dollars before the before January 2017. You lost this bet. This is, this is Bet Moose. There were 25 Bitcoins up for grabs on this bet, and it reached like, like I don't know, $999? Mm, right on the edge. Yeah. yeah, it was right on the edge. But then... I, I lost on this bet. Have you guys seen this bet? This little bet site? It's, it's really slick. You don't have to sign up or sign in or you know give them anything except for a Bitcoin address to pay if you win. Well, and then you, you send them some Bitcoin, and if you win, the Bitcoin just the winnings come back. But if you lose, nothing. If you lose, it's like crickets. It's like <laughs> you, can just, you just look at your phone, look at the screen. <laughs> anyway, Bitcoin did not reach a thousand dollars before the end of the year. However, however, now look! Oh my God! Woo! Oh. One thousand eighteen dollars. That's crazy. How could, it, how could it possibly be worth $1,018? It's not backed by anything. He had me buy the first time in August, and it was like three forty-five. Oh, really? <laughs> so drinks, so those spicy margaritas I'll are buy on you today. Round, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, $1,018. Pretty good for something that's uh, non-existent, right? Anyway, uh, that, was all, that was all very exciting. Uh, 1000 and I think it got as high as 1030 right? So we are in uncharted uh, territory in the highs. Now, I can't I'm, see that graph. Can you guys see this graph? What was the day it crossed? Like the first? Yeah, I think it's the first or the second. Here, here, is, a, here is a look at the last uh, one month. You can see we've been on a tear. So this is like uh, I don't know, the, the Christmas the Christmas stratosphere rocket ship ride here. Tiana got a lot of Very. requests. Question. May I ask you a question? Yes. Um, from what I understand of my experience with Bitcoin in the last year or so, um, I realize that it always takes a dive just as they make more Bitcoin available and that's about to happen. Um, what is your perspective? Wait, it takes a dive when we make more Bitcoin more available. available? Yeah. Well, there, there's um, 12 and a half new Bitcoins every 10 minutes. Oh, really? Yes. Yes. Every 10 minutes, 12 and a half baby new Bitcoins come into the world. And uh, we take very good care of them. They, they, uh, they actually uh, reward all of the computers that are chugging away and, and clearing all the transactions and making the system work, making the system secure. Like but they're, Linux, blockchain, Coinbase, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, some of those are minor. Some of them aren't. But uh, you get the idea. It's the, the people that are participating in the network. But um, it's actually a very predictable rate of inflation. 
when I, and when I say inflation, I mean the actual currency is inflating. Yes. Um, but there won't be a bunch of uh, like an, an unexpected new batch of bitcoins. Right. So yeah. there won't be a, a big deflation anymore. It's just a, a little bit of the normal. What was, was the thing you were talking about? With certain blocks that they were going to release, which was going to create less money for the for the miners. Some kind of ah, well, that happened earlier this year. Um, there, there is a a set of rules that everybody can see, and the. The whole ecosystem follows these rules, and the rules state that once every four years, the inflation rate gets cut in half. That happened in July, was it? So in, in July, the, the inflation rate cut in half, and so we, we already saw that happen where the inflation rate and, and the block reward and the incentives in place for people to participate were cut in half, and there was a, there was a little bit of anxiety around that. But the By inflation, you mean money supply, basically? Yes, yes. I, when I'm... What's inflating when I see inflation is the amount of money, not the prices. It, it's actually the opposite to the way that the fractional reserve banking system works. And it's supposed to be a limited amount of cash. And whatever they do, they really deflate it. When they actually expand it, it actually inflates it, but it looks like deflation initially. Correct? I'm not sure I followed you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's basically money supply. Yeah. So it's the amount of yeah. Money yeah, yeah. And it's... it's I thought it had to do with the amount of transactions that are happening, not, but it's actually steady rate, or it's average, you're saying, 12 and a half per 12 minutes. and a half. It, it, no, it's steady. exactly, it's exactly okay. 12 and a half every 10 minutes. Okay. Sometimes it takes longer than 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. uh, sometimes it takes shorter than 10 minutes, but uh, that, that is uh, the idea. Yeah. yeah. And it stops at 20 million. 20, 21 million. 21 will, will, is the, uh, the... Not 22. Not 22, <laughs> not 20, so 21 most million. Average, how many years until it gets to 21 million? Uh, it won't. It won't now. actually reach. It won't actually be done creating new bitcoins until the year 2140, something like that. So we'll all be gone, and Bitcoin will be. No, we'll, we don't. Oh, really? That. You're going to stick around? I don't know okay. what you're talking about. I think. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be interesting. You might want to stick around. Something interesting is going to happen. And uh, it's going to be. Hopefully, we can stick around and see what it, what exactly it is. Um, all right. Now, Bitcoin isn't the only coin in existence, and I thought this was kind of interesting to take a look at in terms of price. You mean cryptocurrency? These are these are other cryptocurrencies, competitors to Bitcoin, ready to <laughs> knock Bitcoin's block off, so to speak, <laughs> if uh, if they can. But I think it's useful to note that Bitcoin is the 800-pound gorilla amongst these crypto coins. Bitcoin is worth over 16.5 billion U.S. dollars wow. today, and the closest rival is is under a billion U.S. dollars. So Bitcoin really is a, a monster by comparison. It's also been around for a lot longer. Um, but that's not to say that these aren't still interesting, and that's why we look at them from time to time. Uh, check out these growth rates. You know, Bitcoin is on a bit of a price tear, but look at uh, uh, Monero and Ethereum Classic I was and ask Dash. You, what of the next top three do you think is the one to watch? Well, that's a good question. The, the way I like to think about it is take a look at Bitcoin and what does Bitcoin get wrong or what are the things that Bitcoin is where Bitcoin's possibly making a mistake? that if it fails based on that, something else takes its place. So one thing that Bitcoin doesn't do very well is fungibility. Fungibility means one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. And because you can trace all Bitcoins, if uh, you, you have the possibility there could be a blacklist. Right? But there's three confirmations for every transaction, so it's not truly unfunded. Fungible. 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 <laughs> I like that word. Fungible. It's a fun word. It's a, it's a fun word. And it's like I didn't learn about fungible, fungibility until uh, I started looking at Bitcoin. But it, but actually, Bitcoin is not very fungible because it's traceable. It's, it's not anonymous, which means that, which means that, you know, if I want to say that all the coins that belong to JP, those, I don't want to, I don't, she's a criminal. I don't want her Bitcoins. <laughs> And you know, if you if you no want to do business if you want to do business with me, then you can also have JP's bitcoins. And if we get that kind of atmosphere happening, then that could reduce the usability of Bitcoin. And so there are other coins like Dash and Monero that have fungibility, anonymity baked in, built in from the very beginning. 
And if anonymity and fungibility are the th- the Achilles heel of mm. Bitcoin, then there could be a giant sucking Everyone's sound. learning from Bitcoin. Yes. So the other thing, the other Achilles heel that I think Bitcoin has is governance, meaning how do you decide to make changes to Bitcoin? Uh, one of Bitcoin's strengths is that it's very hard to change. In fact, there is no governance, and they've been trying to change some very simple things for well over a year now and haven't. And there are other coins that have said, okay, we've got a voting mechanism. We've got a way to decide if we're going to, we've got a fair way to decide what we're going to do in the future. Dash is one of those coins that has a governance model built into the coin itself. Is it like a promissory note kind of thing? Uh, It's like a voting mechanism. So let's say, yeah, let's say we want Dash to be blue instead of red. Let's vote on it. As long as it's not Hillary, I'm all good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not that's not a part of the the dash voting uh, process. So you're you're in, you're in good shape. Um, all right. So that's uh that's altcoins, and you know even though Bitcoin has been going up like you know two three four percent, look at Monero up sixteen percent. Um, kind kind of interesting. And you know if you're if you're in this game, if you're in the crypto game. It's probably uh, wise to hedge your position, so to speak, yes. have a few uh, Bitcoin competitors just in case Bitcoin fails for some reason. What is the general correlation between the different cryptocurrencies? Do they move in the same? Where is Mr. Willie? Because they clearly are, but I mean, <laughs> Let's there must see. be some correlation. Or what is he saying? He is saying something. Oh, uh, this, this, this is, this is uh, Willie's uh, um, guide to investing in crypto in uh, crypto corn. He's, 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 he's what's known as a Bitcoin maximalist. I don't know. I don't know if he would adopt that term or not. But uh, basically, he says, "Here's your guide to uh, investing in crypto coins," and then he proceeds to just trash all the other <laughs> all the other coins. Um, it's, it's pretty funny. You should you should follow him on Twitter. It's quite entertaining. It should be a bit like gold and silver. People come for the gold for most, so they're grabbing the silver. As far as how far silver has yet to go. Compared to a gold, yeah, gold and silver. Similar, similar, yeah, like I mean, it's similar to like carrot bars, where people can buy like a gram of gold as opposed to half. Wow. Yeah, well, well, with cryptocurrency, you can buy like one one hundred millionth of a of a. a no, piece. I'm familiar, but I, as re- regards to her question, is uh, it similar to like carrot bars, the one she just talked about? Uh, no, I, I was actually meaning that uh, in relation to how far silver has yet to move to get to gold, many uh, people are well, buying silver because of the ratio. Of yes, money. gold, gold, and gold and silver yes. have a ratio to one another, yes. a price ratio to one another, and traditionally it has been, you know, there's a mean. You can graph that. You can say over the last hundred years, you know. Uh, I don't know, yeah, 16 to 1. And and then when it gets out of whack, people are like, well, it's more interesting to buy silver at this time. And I think that's the case. But it's harder to evaluate these because, well, for one thing, we don't have as as much history. In fact, Bitcoin's been around, uh, well, eight years about. Yeah, almost exactly, as a matter of fact. Um, And uh, yeah, these have been around for a year, two years. So it's it's hard to compare these to, uh, you know, especially when you're thinking about money, comparing these as money to silver and gold. I don't think we're, we're quite there yet. All right. So because Bitcoin is so popular these days, we've got a little bit of a problem with the throughput. Um, I can't really see this. So I'm going to skip it. Throughput. Yes. Throughput. 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 Uh, Bitcoin can only do about three transactions per second. That's why we had a problem the other day. Yeah, three transactions per second is the um, is basically the max. There's a technical limit of about seven, but the the once you put the transactions together and put a block together, yeah, um, we're we're seeing about two to three transactions per second, and that's not enough for the entire planet to use Bitcoin. Yet another Achilles heel. Now we want to sign up for the program we just did. Might wanna... We waited 55 minutes before I think our, our three confirmations came through. And I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. It's yeah. never been like that. Welcome, welcome to the uh, ambiguous world of uh, Bitcoin clearing times. We're in a, a bit of a, well, this, this is the reality of the world we live in right now. There's just, uh, Bitcoin's a bit of a victim of its own success. There's a, there's a log jam. It's now, 
Now, if you if you pay uh, an appropriate fee, and there's a there's a fee marketplace developing for Bitcoin transactions, then it should go through no problem. Um, but you can see, like here is a list of uh, all the oldest transactions. There's some in here from December 31st. But look at the fee they put in there. That's a that's a lot of donuts there. So basically, some Bitcoin miner has to clear those transactions uh, out of the goodness of no, their heart. You got stuck in the mempool. You got stuck in the mempool, and there's when there's too many transactions in the mempool. It's not not a fun party. It's not a fun pool party when there's too many transactions. But there's in. a really good reason why the pool party is stuck. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Yeah. Later. Well, here here is a list. Of, here is a fee calculator. Right now, we're at, uh, right at this very moment. We're at forty satoshis per byte. So basically, you know, the fees are not related to how much money you're sending. It's related to how big the transaction is. And if you if you pay it forty satoshis, which is the smallest unit of Bitcoin, satoshi per byte for your transaction, then it should go through in the next block. Um, but some people try to cheap out and they they wait a little longer. But when this happens, the mempool, right, the backlog, the mempool is just the backlog of Bitcoin transactions, can get as high as fifteen megs. Mm-hmm. Now a Bitcoin block is only one meg. So when the when the backlog is 15 megs, that means there's 15 x. There's 15 times as many uh, Bitcoin transactions that are trying to make it into the next block. So that's a very, very crowded nightclub. <laughs> the very lo- long line Skyward. outside the nightclub trying to get the, uh, their transaction into the next block. But like I said, if you pay if you pay enough, and you you know, it can be you know when the when the Mempool is really jammed. It can be 20, 30, 40 cents per transaction. Is there a particular server user that you think is better than another to avoid that backlog? Like Coinbase, JX, whatever. Well, the, it does depend. The, the fees are paid by the user. Right? So if I'm tonight, when I go to Kismet and I buy my Herlumi burger <laughs> and I pay for it, my, my wallet will decide for me what fee to put on there. And so I've done the research with my wallet to make sure that they do a good dynamic fee calculation so that I don't get overcharged, but also the transaction goes through. Is that with the Airbits? Sign up with the yes. Else? Yes, Airbits. Airbits is doing a good job. That seems to be the only one I found that does not have any fees aside. Period. But it only is allowed in Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, blah, blah. Yeah, I have a US VPN, so... Uh-huh. I get in trouble, and I need to literally go to my bank account here in Megabank and get a letter from them to be able to be approved for adding yes. bits. Yes, yes, this is this is what's known as KYC. Have you ever heard of KYC? No, please. They have really good fried chicken. Please educate us. They have good fried chicken. <laughs> no. Oh, Kentucky no, fried chicken. Oh, no, no, KYC. It's uh, know your customer, uh, <laughs> which means that people who participate in the global banking system are obliged, mostly by the United States. To, to collect information about you, yeah. such as your, uh, I don't know, facial makeup, maybe your uh, fingerprints, your passport, your first right. firstborn, <laughs> a few stem cells. Um, no, it's uh, it's quite onerous, and it's funny because we usually get upset with these banks and these uh, people who are forced to ask these questions. Nerdy, so you have to do this every day, right? Yeah, when someone wants to buy Bitcoin at the Bitcoin shop over on Jalan Sukma. He's got a, uh, you do a strip search, right? Body cavity search? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what goes on in the back room. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. He's walking in the back room. <laughs> no, it's. Where's uh, your rubber left? <laughs> All right, we'll be, we'll be done in just a second. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, but you, you will need your passport, and that's collected because. Mine's all zeros, man. Oh really? Your your passport numbers all zero? I get all wow, zero. you're a VIP. I can help anybody out with that. Well, by the way. <laughs> wow. So wow. does that correlate with any country opening up, like trading wise, like you know, like US starts and the block happens? Is there any kind of time we should look at? Yeah. Uh, you mean the is there more or less KYC depending on where you go? Well, no. It's time mm-hmm. of day, like if we're like now, you know, America is asleep or just waking up. You know, oh. you know, you know like have five a.m. Is that blocking? blocking the actual transaction time. No, no. Uh, the, like the, the Bitcoin nodes are all over the world and they happen day, night. Live. Bitcoin trades day, day night. Uh, Bitcoin transactions clear day, night. It's always That's happening. Like uh, Japan since, yeah, yeah. since 2009. Yeah. All right. And what's interesting is, you know, the fees, this, these, this is the miner's revenue. 
And remember I said the earlier this year, the, the block reward, the incentive for miners to participate was cut in half. So that happened here. So here miners are making all this money. And then all of a sudden on a, on a certain date, they're making half as much. And you can see that because we are having this log jam, this Bitcoin log jam, they're making more money on the fees. In fact, they're, they're basically getting right up to where they were uh, uh, before. Uh, making money with with the fees, so this is a good thing, because a fee marketplace needs to arise if Bitcoin is going to survive, mm -hmm. and it's good that these fees are starting to pay the miners as opposed to just the block reward, because that transition needs to take place. May I ask you? Sure. Um, is it appropriate or inappropriate? Do you think that the the fee rate, because of course we're talking banksters, we're all banksters. We're, we are our own banksters now. Yeah. That it be a very yourself. minute. No, <laughs> I believe it needs to only be a very minute point, and that's why I love Bitcoin. Yeah. It, it needs to be a very minute percentage that is perceived. Well, you, yeah. you know, or I, do you I think it, the trend is that we're just being sucked into another vacuum where they're going to do the same. Well. There, there's a, a lot of things to complain about around Bitcoin, but it does solve some problems. And, you know, I come from this industry, and one of the my biggest gripes about the industry was they charge a percentage and not a flat fee. Even though it's computers and they're just moving around bits just like Bitcoin is, they charge a percentage of the transaction. And I never, I never except thought that. Except X. Except X is nothing. No, it's pretty much yeah, I'm, no. I'm talking about, about banking. And, and X is the only one I know of that you no, can bank. Uh, okay. Right. And, and uh, even BitX transactions will charge you a fee to, to, make, to update the blockchain. Because if they don't, then your transactions will never clear. It's not BitX that does the, tra the, uh, the clearing. It's uh, others, the whole ecosystem of computers that are participating. So, um, <laughs> but what's interesting about Bitcoin is it just charges... Per byte, so you can send a million dollars, and they and if it's you know only ten bytes, and you're at a, a low point, and it's only ten satoshis per byte, then you have a very inexpensive transaction. <laughs> yeah, so in that sense, it's better. But you know, there there's Bitcoin has other problems, but it does solve a few things. Makes like a life a little bit better than it was. It solves a lot more than any problems it arises. All right, who, who's got the, the birthday? Where's the birthday person? Oh, it's Bitcoin's birthday. <laughs> oh! It's you, uh, Brad. Uh, Bitcoin's Bitcoin. so modest. He's so shy. He doesn't want to you know, take too much credit. And here is the Genesis block. Does anyone know what the Genesis block is? Genesis block. This is, this is the very first Bitcoin block ever in existence, ever. Presumably, this was mined by Satoshi Nakamoto. How much is this block worth? Well, at, at the very beginning, Bitcoin was turning out 50 Bitcoins every 10 minutes. Right? That was the initial inflation rate, 50 Bitcoins every 10 minutes. How much is 50 Bitcoins worth right now? 48,000 dollars. Yeah, 50, almost 50,000 euro, over 50,000 US dollars. So he just looked on his... 75,000 US dollars, actually. What the, oh, really? Right now, yeah. Yeah. So, euros, about uh, so every 10 minutes, he flipped on. Really yeah, <laughs> oh, back yeah. in, uh, We're well aware. <laughs> back in 2009, Satoshi flipped on his uh, computer, and every 10 minutes, he started spitting out $50,000. It's wow. pretty good. Pretty good. Not pretty good. Shabby. Pretty good. Not too shabby. Uh, it wasn't worth that much back then. So but maybe, he, he you know. <laughs> he yeah, might not have realized, but he had he had a bit of a tiger by the tail here. And what's very also very interesting, uh, these bitcoins are still there; they haven't moved. Yep, they're still sitting there. How can you tell? Fifty thousand dollars because um, the uh, let's see, where's the inputs and outputs? Basically, basically, this is an output, and there's no subsequent output. So this isn't. Uh, the, the, so it's all incoming, not outgoing. Yeah, it's all it's all block Same reward way. and no spending. Here, here it is. This is there's only one transaction associated with this uh, Bitcoin address. <laughs> okay, see it now. Fifty they grand. Now, here's the here's the email from Satoshi. Uh, I don't know, six days later, 
announcing the first release of Bitcoin, a new electronic cash system that uses peer-to-peer -peer network prevent double spending. It's completely decentralized with no server or central authority. Imagine this. Imagine reading this for the first time when you don't have I any idea. I actually got this. Under you got this email? Very similar. Yeah, yeah years you were, ago, you were, and I thought it was full of shit. Yes. I got I'm, sure, I'm sure a lot of people were uh, thinking that this was like another pie-in-the-sky pipe dream. You know, yeah. they had been working on digital cash systems for quite a while, and nobody knew at this point in time that, that this was going to be any different. But uh, there, there's a few interesting points in here I want to point out. Uh, total circulation will be 21 million coins. It'll be distributed to network nodes when they make blocks with the amount cut in half every four years. So the first four years, there's 10 million coins. The next four years, there's 5 million coins. We were just talking about this. And we are right here. This year, we're going to make 2.6 million coins. Or this four-year period, actually, we'll make 2.6 million coins. And you can see that it cuts in half and on and on and on. Uh, the other interesting thing here is uh, when that runs out, the system can support transaction fees if needed. So they didn't even have a, a fee mechanism in the first well, version. Yeah. In the first version of Bitcoin, they couldn't foresee that you know they would. They you know he was thinking about it, which is kind of interesting, but it wasn't there. It's like someday we can just put a fee mechanism in there. It's based on open market competition. There will uh, probably always be nodes willing to process transactions for free. I beg to differ. There's <laughs> There's a few uh, from December 31st still hanging out in the mempool. Uh, but anyway, this is interesting. A little, little glimpse back in time. I think it's, it's fun to look at the Genesis block because that's actually part of the blockchain. You can't change that. That's in a, in a million computers uh, all over the place, all over the internet. That'll never go away. And this uh, Nakamoto Institute has ca uh, cataloged a bunch of those early emails. And it's fun to like, kind of try and put yourself in the frame of mind back in the day when Bitcoin was just being born. That was actually the challenge signing up on blockchain is that it's so present that you can't find what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. It's like all these transactions. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, they fly by. That, that's the, that, Those are the three transactions per second. It's got to be a lot faster than that, actually. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is like a little, little moment in time. It's kind of interesting to look at. All right. So last time we got together... We did a year in review, and it wasn't entirely thorough. We only had an hour. It was just me, and a lot of people published their own years in review, and I, I missed some stuff. I thought it might be, might be fun to go back and take a look at some of the stuff that I missed. Uh, this is broken down month by month, so it's pretty cool. People's Bank of China sets up a task force to consider, uh, consider creating their own digital currency. Do you guys remember that? Anybody know what happened to that? I'm sure that's probably still in the works. You know, the other thing that happened in China this year was they uh, became members of the SDR. They yeah. are the new dollar, and we're waiting for that revaluation to go. Come yeah, on. you ready? You ready to take the dollar collapse? Yeah. I got right. the dong. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Come on. Bring on the rebound. Yeah. Yeah, we, we find ourselves in this uh, perverted state of mind where we want like chaos. Yeah, yeah. Yes, this is like not good. Not a good. We're not on a good earth. Thing. <laughs> necessary state of being. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. What, entropy, not entropy. What, what else do we have here? Sorry, in, thing about Kutcher. Oh, Aston Kutcher. Ah, yes. We got. <laughs> we got our, we got our very own. <laughs> usually we talk about. Here? Usually we talk about Brangelina and their breakup because that was also that also happened Brangelina. this year. Brangelina. But a <laughs> Brad. <laughs> Angelina. Yeah, yeah, that happened this year. Really smart, that was that was in my year. Review. If you would have been here last, I know you been here last time. Yeah, I would have told you all about Brangelina. But <laughs> yes, we do. Have, we do have Aston Kutcher, who who said way back when. Where did you see that? He, he basically said that Bitcoin this year will be a. But what he said was uh, this year will be a hedge against a possible Trump presidency. So very prescient words from Mr. Kutcher. Oh yeah. He has his finger on the pulse, that Ashton Kutcher. Actually, he has some wisdom from a cougar. I hear he's a very, very astute venture capitalist. Like, he's he's invested some of his money. In, he's a very then, intelligent human being. Yeah. He is. But, no, but he's a star. He's just a pretty face. He can yeah, also be smart. I, I beg to differ. He's got to be one or the other. I, I actually have some personal experience here. With Ashton Kutcher? I'm from, really, yeah. Oh, this no, is, this is a really generated show. This is a generated show. Like <laughs> no, called Martha's Vineyard. And all I do is cook for the rich and famous. And I know him. Oh, really? And I cook for him. Wow. And he is like also. Um, Obviously, he gave you a tip about Bitcoin. At, no. No. Do you know Grace? Grace, who? Um, she used to be their personal chef. 
Grace actually didn't come. That's why I was there cook when I was there. I, I cook for Ian. I was just throwing it out there. No, no, no. I do. Ian is his manager. And yeah. I took, yeah, they always, sorry. I don't mean to name drop, and I usually don't because it's bullshit. But well, in this particular instance, I mean, I've gotten pissed on George Soros' Porsche just because I can. Oh, really? Wow. <laughs> but Ashton is that a dangerous. Soul, and I just wanted to jump on here. <laughs> No. Well, I only care about Brad, no, just, Brad and no, Angelina, so. No, I wanted to know because the prediction thing. I was right. Right. Oh, yeah, he was, he, yes. Curious about. Yes, yes, he was, he was, he was <laughs> bullish on Bitcoin. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk oh, about yeah. May. Uh, J- this is interesting. Japan's Bitcoin trading volume skyrockets past the global U.S. dollar trade volume. Yen, tra- yen trading volume are now between three and five times the dollar volume, but still nowhere near Chinese. So, you know. A lot of people don't realize Japan's a small island, but it's second, third largest economy in the world. Yeah. And also, they are a hugely cash-centric society. They, people buy a car, they bring a suitcase full of cash <laughs> to buy a car. And I find this really – I mean, I, I love Japan because they're just so weird and different. Like, they do everything different. They just like – they're like from another planet. And – not, nothing, I mean, in a good way. Like, they just do their own thing. And uh, they are on the Bitcoin bandwagon this year, and I think that's also a bullish sign, especially given their culture around cash, because there's a war on cash. Cash is going away, and Bitcoin will be the cash replacement, or it will get squashed. Because, you know, there, there's no other option out there that could possibly serve the role of cash if governments get rid of actual cash, uh, besides uh, local exchange systems or barter systems or something along those lines, there's nothing that could be globally recognized as cash if Bitcoin does not succeed. And governments around the world are trying to get rid of cash. And it's, it's bullish for Bitcoin if a cash-centric society like Japan is getting involved with, with Bitcoin itself. It, it is the digital cash option. And... Get, uh, basically, the power remains with you, just like with cash, it remains with you. And it's our only safeguard against negative interest rates, capital controls, confiscation, bail-ins, that kind of thing, the kind of things we've been seeing uh, around the world in exactly. crazy. It'll never happen in the States, but it, it happens in other places like Greece and Venezuela. But in the States, it'll never happen because we're different. We're, I mean, we're like the best. <laughs> And the USA is the best, and it won't, it won't happen. It won't happen in the USA, but elsewhere, you know, you got to be careful with your cash because they're they're coming for it. Make America great again. <laughs> All right, what else do we got? Uh, I hope the irony is not lost on you, but it. <laughs> oh, the other thing that uh, happened in May. This is prescient. Uh, the Indian exchange Unicoin uh, partnered uh, for Bitcoin sales across India. Why is it important that the that uh, India discovered Bitcoin in May? Because six months later. Yes, six months later, bombshell of all bombshells. Overnight, they eradicate eighty six percent of the money in the whole country. How's that for uh, how's that for political occurrence? Anyway, I think I. I don't think anybody realized the significance back in May, how important that would be to India. But when that happened, Bitcoin was trading at a 30% premium. So Bitcoin was over a thousand dollars, US dollars in India way before, just, just six weeks but ago. it still didn't pay out my bet. It's China's looking like doing something similar with the numbers. Mm-hmm. What's that? Oh yeah. It, it's, uh, it's happening all over the world. Uh, yeah. you've, you've got these, these fancy pants Harvard economists that are calling for the end of cash because it's used for drug money and uh, black Dark money. Way. Yeah, <laughs> dr- yeah, buying drugs and no. paying off. Case. Yeah. <sighs> it's got germs on it. <laughs> it's dirty. <laughs> All right. In June, the IMF report calls Bitcoin blockchain the Internet of Trust. While uh, created to avoid banks, the report reads Bitcoin's blockchain te- technology may end up helping them. Mm. Is that how they get on to uh, Bilderberg? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I think the IMF has something to do with Bilderberg, maybe. I no, know. I actually almost fainted when I saw that Bloomberg, Bilderberg, and Expedia were all pro Bitcoin. I'm like, what? Well, you, you know, uh, I have the agenda for the next Bilderberg meeting. You know what they're going to discuss? 
please do tell. Uh, people urinating on George Soros' car. <laughs> Oh, oh, you say, say porch? I thought you said porch. 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 Oh, oh okay. No, oh, well, they're they're off the. They're 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 apparently, people are married. also paying on his car, so you're you're Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't have a porch. He had a big SUV thing. All right. Give it a go. Here's another thing I missed. Kim.com announces that Mega Upload will run on Bitcoin micropayments. Via his upcoming BitCash network. Have you guys heard about this? No. You guys know about this uh, Kim.com? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a man that changed his last name to .com. Whoa, for real? We're not, are we living in a novel? I think we're living in a novel. Anyway, he's, he, he, go read Legally, his story. Lawfully. Lawfully, well, we don't know. Could be illegal in the States. I think he's, I don't think he's all that concerned with ultimate legality. I think he's pushing the envelope. Yeah. He's, he has shown in the past, if you do any research on him, you'll see that he is not afraid to mix it up with the authorities. I like he, him. He was uh, up for extradition to the United States, even though he's never been there, never done business <laughs> there, never did anything in the United States. But they were, you know, right. he lives in New Zealand. He's originally from Germany or the Netherlands or something. And they were going to extradite him to the United States for copyright infringement because he set up Mega Upload. Sounds like a bad. Mega economy. upload is like a file sharing service, and people were using it to share pirated movies. And he said, "Well, it's not my fault. They're just, you know, I don't know what they're going to do. I, I just have a file sharing service." Well, that wasn't good enough, and uh, he actually went to court in New Zealand and arranged for it to be online on, on like basically live stream. So his whole court process <laughs> was live streamed. And I, as far as I know, he hasn't been extradited to the United States. He knows and he's 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 launching this mega upload 2.0, which is basically the next version. And he's going to encrypt everything, so th there, he will have no idea if there's an encrypted movie on his service because it's you know people will share the files and it'll all be just encrypted traffic, and he will claim to not know anything about it. And also, he won't be subject to payment problems because he's integrating Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So he's he's mega opting out. Of, of the whole system. <laughs> Welcome to the disappearing. And uh, anyway, when he launched uh, Mega Upload 2.0, he had a big party at his big house, and he arranged for like actors to arrive on helicopters and like scale down the ropes <laughs> and like act like they were going to break up his launch party. But it was just he's he's a bit of he's a bit of a ham. He doesn't miss many meals either. Sounds here. like a cool guy though. <laughs> All right, September. What did, I, what did I write here? Bank of Canada publishes their findings that volatility in Bitcoin's price is steadily declining. Obviously, they've been reading Willie Wu's page. Yes. Learning about Bitcoin volatility from Willie Wu and then publishing it as if uh, a grand uh, state entity like the Bank of Canada would uh, would need to realize <laughs> this. But anyway, I thought that was interesting that um, that they are. Uh, Capitalizing on the research of our very own really <laughs> weird. What else? What else did I write here? Oh, here's some more stuff. South Korea announces plans to create their own national digital currency. I think Ecuador has Ecuador has a, a digital currency. Uh, I think in, in Sweden they're talking about issuing their own digital currency and giving it to the population. Swiss coin as well. May I ask a question? Sure. Um, one of my Sorry, I'm very vocal. I, I apologize. No, she's really not. Don't, don't go like do this. She doesn't like. No, it. but I've been looking for a form like this. Ask me the question. Come on. Focus. I love one your my, enthusiasm. One of my <laughs> dear friends here is one of the OPPT trustees. Are you name dropping again? Yes. Come on. I, I'm don't, not. Don't yeah, I'm not it. giving his name. What I'm saying is what he's what? conscious of and how oh. he and a couple other people filed the UCC one papers to eradicate all the governments and banks. Their UCC charters back in 2012. So they're oh. all. Functioning fraudulently. Oh, okay. Moving forward. No, he's who I'm going snowboarding with. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, question being, considering this is all the way, how do we validate the fact that these dates of alleged activation to like the IMS, the BIS, BS, whatever, how is it going to shift it? Uh, what's the question? I mean, doesn't the Bitcoin stand to go explosive? Beyond this, when this comes to, you know, basic people's knowledge? Well, we, we shall see. I mean, the Bitcoin exists in a, in a free market world. And if the world 
doesn't like these other systems, then perhaps they'll choose Bitcoin as an alternative. Yeah, that's what yeah. Sorry, I just wanted your personal opinion. <laughs> You're rock, by the yeah. way. I'm sorry. I'm too tired. It's, it's, it's quite right. I'm chatty cat. <laughs> All right. What else do we got here? Ooh, what's this? It's a little too large. <laughs> 14 industry luminaries and owe to the state of Bitcoin in 2016. Uh, of course, I missed this too. Guess who made this list? Lots Ashton of not, no, not Ashton Kutcher. <laughs> Lots of people here. Yeah, oh, it's such a shame that it's. Uh, we've got we've got Roger Ver, Paul Storge. Who are the? Uh, there's Roger. Uh, this guy from Mycelium. Uh, the Bitcoin Mom. Who else is here? Where is he? Oh, there he is. Willie Wu, what's he doing on the list of luminaries? Oh my God! Uh, here, here is. What was the? Uh, is this not getting through? Yeah, he said it isn't good, so you should say hi or something. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She is an omniversal. <laughs> so what was the? What was the question? I had the question. Uh, up here. The one about Willy Woo? Yeah, the, the question that they gave to all these people was, uh, what do you, if you could summarize the, the current state of Bitcoin as of the year 16 closes, what is it? And uh, there's one interesting. Get it hard. <laughs> Get it hard. <laughs> I paid Bitcoin Mag to publish that. Ah, I see. I know. How, see, I'm so everything, naive. I don't know how these things work. Bitcoin is <laughs> a scam. A scam. <laughs> Uh, let's see. I've highlighted this one. What did I, what does it say? Bitcoin in 2016 is like a teenager sending off to college. Uh, applications are one of the last gunslingers in the old West. The technology has emerged and is starting to move forward and stand on its own, but is still a new and immature space with lots of risk and pitfalls. Overall, as this technology matures and marches forward to adulthood, we will see more opportunities for impact and more evidence of its amazing potential. So Bitcoin, according to this guy is still a petulant teenager. Let's see what uh, I got laughed at when I told somebody when I had to Let's see what Willie Wu had to say. Uh, getting ready for the mainstream. All right, that's much more optimistic. I like Willie's version better. 2016 painted in numbers. Inflation halved to 4%. Price doubled to meet it. Markets shook off uh, 2014, 2015. Fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And then the market engaged in FOMO, fear of missing out. Uh, liquidity grew 6x while risk halved to 6%. I, don't, I wonder how he measures risk. That's a, that's an interesting question. How do you measure risk, Will? Um, now approaching fiat levels. Uh, okay, so he did the, an article on this where he's showing that volatility is approaching uh, the same level as like the USD New Zealand dollar cross. And when that when Bitcoin becomes less volatile than the US dollar, it changes everything. <laughs> then it becomes the store of value par excellence. It should be anyway. Uh, what was okay? Meanwhile, network capacity redlined at ninety-eight percent. That's what we were talking about about the full blocks and the three transactions per second, uh, forcing for the first time a demand-driven fee market to emerge. Right, that's the uh, the miners getting money from their fees as opposed to the block rewards. So that's a good thing. Um, already ten percent of uh, miners' revenue uh, in the fees. So that is a action-packed paragraph. If I ever saw one, no one. Uh, let's see. Risk is volatility. Yes. I figured that out on my own. I'm just a little slow on the uptake. That's, that's the problem. <laughs> She's all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Will. All right. What else do we have here? Hang on, folks. Something you have yellow. All right. Speaking of luminaries, this is a post by Will. There he is up in the corner there. Uh, Bitcoin calmer with age. Beats stocks. The stocks are based on freaking fraudulent FRNs as well. It's all created out of thin air. This is value. Yeah. Value based. All right. You're here. Yes. Bitcoin is uh, is growing up. There's lots of uh, kind of allusions to growing up and coming of age and uh, petulant teenagers and um, coming into adulthood. Maybe 2016 or maybe 2017 will be the year that Bitcoin actually becomes an adult, gets a driver's license. Has its first beer. No, we don't want it to have a driver's license. It'll be submitting itself to being a property of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yes, you're right. All right. Uh, 
Let's talk about that too. You, get, too you guys recognize this guy? Talk, talk about uh, Bitcoin celebrities. Ooh, yeah. Here's a, here's our man Lee Wilson mm. tearing it up in in China. We had a a Bitcoin film festival. What? Yeah, right there. No, no, that's nerdy. <laughs> no, no, different person. Uh, this is Lee Wilson. He is uh, our friend from China. He's from Malaysia. Oh, he's from Malaysia, but he but he's in China all the time. He's in China all the time. He wears lots of sequenced jackets and shoes. And leather pants. <laughs> and leather pants. He's very stylish. <laughs> he comes to Bali every once in a while, and and uh, it's always fun to have him around. We had a Bitcoin film festival, I think, in 2015, and he shows up with like 500 Chinese people, <laughs> like to go to Paradiso. We, we had we had to, we had to shuffle them in. They would like come in, watch for 15 minutes, and they'd go back out, and then they'd give their ticket to their friend, and then they would go in. So, yeah, it was a, it was kind of a disaster, but in a kind of a fun way. And uh, anyway, he is totally plugged in and apparently can uh, charge 1,000 U.S. dollars to uh, listen to him yeah, speak. Wow. Uh, first come, first serve even at that price. David, Holy I cow. Yeah. So that, that happens on, uh, is that January 10th? Mm. David, I in, uh, yeah. in, in the yes. States, that's October 1st, but uh, everywhere else, <laughs> it's, it's uh, January 10th. And uh, so buy your plane ticket and get in there. Uh, somebody go and we'll give us a full report. I want to know how uh, he, he must be delivering some valuable information if he's charging us. Kind of <laughs> that was also part of the, the celebrity here, portion of the, of the evening really tonight. Okay. Enough about 2016. What is the future of Bitcoin? Where will it be in 20 years? Anyone care to guess? Retired? <laughs> yeah, you, you <laughs> no, think, we'll be retired. You, you think we'll be on to something? You think we'll be on to something new? I'm struggling here, guys. Sorry. Will Will Bitcoin be around in 20 years, or yes. do you think we'll be on to something? Uh, something new? If we're not beyond any kind of currency exchanges known as money, I believe Bitcoin will be. Well, from your Volley. from your lips Volley. to God's ears, let's hope you're right. Uh, on the <laughs> oh, I like I like this little. I was uh, giving it my other hand. Let, let me see. <laughs> Uh, Bitcoin, a mysterious new technology emerges seemingly out of nowhere. This is Huffington Post, by the way. These people don't know anything about Bitcoin. They know Bitcoin is for buying drugs. That, that may be what they know. So, so we're explaining it to them. A mysterious new technology emerges seemingly out of nowhere, but actually the result of two decades of intense research and development by nearly anonymous researchers. Nearly anonymous. That sounds very mysterious, doesn't it? Political idealist project... Uh, project uh, visions of liberation and revolution onto it. Establishment elites heap contempt and scorn on it. On the other hand, technologists and nerds are transfixed by it. And geeks. Yep, guilty as charged. They, they see within it enormous potential and spend their nights and weekends tinkering with it instead of going to parties or kissing girls. Uh, <laughs> eventually, mainstream Why products... That like that? <laughs> eventually, no mainstream products, companies, and industries emerge to commercialize it. Its effects become profound, and later many people wondered why its powerful promise wasn't more obvious from the start. Yes, why wasn't that first block uh, worth now $50,000? people have their minds closed. So yeah. They can't what technology it. am I talking about? Personal computers? The internet? No, it's Bitcoin. You like my... Uh, you like my I, I, I'm, I'm available for voiceover work, guys. I would have <laughs> that in the Twilight Zone. Yeah, yeah. For you, too. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, anyway, did I find anything else? Anyway, there's a, there's a host of people that are chiming in on what, what, what will be in 20 years' time. And uh, I think it's fun to think about. Here's Paul Puey. He's the CEO of Airbits. The person oh. that puts together ah, the, the app we have, yeah. Yes, he's a really smart guy. In 20 years, Bitcoin or other decentralized currencies will, at minimum, be the reserve currency for settlement between nations, providing global commerce free of political currency manipulation. Yes. More likely, it will also be the digital gold that connects and de uh, the decentralized application ecosystem. We will utilize potentially tens, if not hundreds, of digital tokens for various apps and services, and Bitcoin will be the gold standard store of value that will power these decentralized applications to enable everything from e-commerce, ride-sharing, insurance, and gaming. Absolutely. Now, what's interesting about this statement is he is contending that Bitcoin will be a reserve currency, right? It won't, we won't be buying our coffee. We won't be spending Bitcoin at Kismet. 
<laughs> and uh, in other places. We won't be buying hamburgers. Uh, we will be, you know, settling balance of accounts on a nightly basis between major banks and this fee market. You know, especially if we're only doing two or three transactions per second, uh, it'll cost hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars to write something to the Bitcoin blockchain. So, how how is Bitcoin going to deliver on its promises if? Transaction fees are because it doesn't need to be a hoard system anymore. Hundred dollars per transaction. Are you aware of like um, there's a couple of cards out now um, that are money cards created by people who are in the banking industry that have no fees for changing alternative currency and this and that. It really needs to be a minor amount, like what's going on with blockchain. It never needs to be more to be valuable and it have extreme value in exchange for whatever yeah but that's what i'm saying it doesn't need to turn into another banks therefore well, no, it well, doesn't well, that's what well it, it's it is what it is it's like a force of nature like people can't really decide what it's going to be these people are predicting trying to predict these and these people work with it all day every day they're trying to decide what it's going to be and paul is saying that well it might be a hundred dollars per transaction, a thousand dollars per transaction. It could be the digital gold or the settlement layer. And maybe we will use other tokens or other blockchains, other Bitcoin competitors as our walking around money. You mean models of value? Oh, like, just, yeah. Just, just, just like so, love so like service. So like when I buy a hamburger or JP pays me um, to shine her shoes, um, we'll, we'll do that in our own ecosystem. And then when a thousand such transactions take place, they'll write one transaction to the blockchain and, <laughs> and, and reconcile everything. And even though it's a thousand dollars, that's probably way less expensive than the existing infrastructure, the existing banking infrastructure, uh, made up of lots of banking executives that drive BMWs back and forth to, uh, buildings with large columns that have air conditioning inside, et cetera, et cetera. So even though it may not live up to the digital cash system that Satoshi originally wrote about, it still could be something good. Um, and, and also, you know, he's saying that there might be a bunch of other coins, other denominations, you know, Dash, Monero, uh, Zcash. But it's also possible that these side chains could be denominated in Bitcoin. Bitcoin will have a very stable value against everything in the real economy. So we could actually still pay for a hamburger denominated in Bitcoin, but not really have the Bitcoin to spend. So it'll be the valuation that other cryptocurrencies are based on. It'll be the global valuation of, of Bitcoin. Right, yeah. right. they might, they might um, attach every transaction to a future transaction that needs to be reconciled with the blockchain at some future time. And it allows these things to happen. Refers to yeah. sovereign nation, right? Reserve but China is the new reserve currency. In the world. Well, um, I'm sorry. So, a reserve currency generally refers to like basically the savings of a nation. Right. Right. Well, right. but it could just be a reserve currency that's apolitical or not bound by a, a nation's currency. We don't know that world. Okay, we tend to think about right, it in those yeah. terms. But actually, it's. It's not good that the U.S. dollar is the world's reserve currency it's not the world's be because reserve it's got currency. because it's got domestic uh, course, domestic and international com conflicting interests, and we're probably going to have some sort of economic reset, and then the world will decide what is the next the uh, re reserve currency going yeah. to be. It's, and it's interesting, but I don't know the path to get there. Right, <laughs> the transition between here and there is it, it, it'll need to be smooth. Right. Well, it's it's related to volatility and liquidity. Um, if if it's very non-volatile, if it basically yeah, keeps its enough. value, and if you can always trade it, like if, if there's always someone willing to go in both directions on either trade, then then it could be Bitcoin. Now, the other currency that's going to buy for that spot is the the IMF, the <laughs> Special Drawing Rights, the, the last major political entity that has a clean balance sheet is oh. the IMF. They're also the third largest order of gold yeah, in the world. That's true. Aside from and so the they and they can print SDRs. Okay. So when the next financial crisis arrives, they could or they could show up and say, "Hey, well, don't worry. Yeah. We're going to we're going to have a new right. value of the dollar versus the SDR. We'll make you loans denominated in SDRs and keep your eye on that because 
when that happens, it'll be a, a bit of a power grab. Waiting. This they is signed the most, in September 30th. This is the most <laughs> stable peg we've ever had. That's the that's the real strength of Bitcoin. If we could always hit another vein of gold in the world, right? There's 21 million Bitcoins, and that is it. We have never had that. In the history of the world. Yeah, humanity humanity has this never is, had that. This is really the revolution that Bitcoin represents. Of I agree. So now it's changed our minds about what's possible there because yeah. gold can fluctuate, all reserve currencies can fluctuate. <clears throat> stock markets fluctuate. So, so here's a question for you: It will Bitcoin replace gold? That is, that is what I. Imagine. That's the question. But there is, that is there isn't. There's still a finite supply of gold too, so I don't understand why you think it's so. Well, you can. Well, you could. I mean, and you can, and you can manipulate it in a way that you can't with Bitcoin. How about right. we see it as a transfer to go beyond money and go beyond the exchange? Of I think Bitcoin is the next yeah. mm-hmm. Well, the, the, the interesting thing about gold is you usually have to, gold has carry costs. So you can't walk around with all the gold in your back pocket. So, so, you, so, you, so usually you have to have an IOU for gold. And then that's where all the, the, that's where all the funny business begins. And the, the with, with, vulnerability with, in Bitcoin is power. That's the one. <laughs> say, say a little bit more. What do you? Well, we cut off the power someplace oh. in the world. Mm. Hello, that Bitcoin doesn't move. So <laughs> that's that's the that's, that's the true. Achilles heel there. Right. Player. Right. And and uh, you know probably for the, for our lifetime, gold will play that hedging role as money in the in the event that there's a huge EMP that knocks out or a solar flare or something that knocks out. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. yeah. They'll try that. I, I don't put it below them. The banks just want to keep it that way. But, but it's interesting that humanity now has this mechanism to count things, and and possibly in the future there will be a very steady ratio between Bitcoin and everything that really exists in the world. So that if oranges, if, if if oranges are are more expensive, that means there's a shortage, and somebody will plant a, a field of oranges next year, and. You know that the, the the world can communicate yeah. in mass ways yeah. if we yeah. if we have this very uh, non volatile ratio of something versus everything else. Right. And when when we start pricing things in Bitcoin, you know sometimes they when you learn a new language and you start dreaming in, in that other <laughs> language, like oh this is so cool. Um, if we start pricing things in Bitcoin, if we re- if we reach that era where you don't think about this in terms of dollars, but it's in terms of Bitcoin or in terms of Satoshi or something. Then you'll know we've arrived. May I ask one more question? Sure. Do you really see the potential of Bitcoin as being the valuation to go to a resource or a gift based economy where things that really have value are I can but I want your I want your perception. I don't, you know, well, Bitcoin can do a lot of things, but I think people also have to change a little bit. We've got Great. we've got like <laughs> there's like a yeah, there's there's um I don't know. A lot of people are in a kind of a scarcity mindset, and and uh, they 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 are trying to like. They don't think that there's enough to go around, and they, I think that's a psychological problem. I don't think Bitcoin can solve it. Maybe it can help. It's like a societal cultural thing, and we we also need to work on that <laughs> before agree. before things will change for the better. So. All right. What else do we have here, guys? Ah, here's the Corda, Corda article. Do you guys remember R3? This is also part of the story of 2016, where basically the, one of the major developers in the Bitcoin world said, I've had enough of Bitcoin and all the infighting and all the people who, who aren't willing to make changes to Bitcoin so that it can survive, and I quit. The guy's name was Mike Hearn, and he said, I'm selling all my Bitcoin. I'm done with Bitcoin. It's dead. It's a dead project. It's never going to work, and he went and and um, uh, began with this R3 company. And actually, the day he quit, they also did this press release on this R3 thing, and um, everybody was kind of getting on that bandwagon for a little while, like maybe Bitcoin is dead, and maybe it's not about Bitcoin, maybe it's about the blockchain. Like, forget about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is for drug dealers and, and everybody else, and we're, gonna, we're going to do the blockchain. The blockchain is where it's at. And they created this consortia of like 40 banks and all of them put in like a million dollars a piece or they, they funded this effort and lots of very smart people got together to try to decide 
what's going on with um, something new, something post Bitcoin. And what's interesting is we saw the entire uh, life cycle of this thing play out to the point where at the end of the year, banks were pulling out. They started to open source the, the project that they did, which is always a sign that, you know, there's really, you know, it's kind of not enough funding. And it's a kind of a graceful way to say, oh, well, we're done. We're going to give this to the, to the world and they can do what they would like with it. And what, what they have done is created this thing called Corda. Um, on, here's the, here he is, Mike Hearn, and the guidance of well-known Mike Hearn. Now, what is this thing? Well, there is no, I, I just want to highlight a few things about what this is, because this is, you know, it's kind of like if you have the internet and someone says, okay, well, we're going to go build the intranet. You know, it, in my mind, it's always going to be some kind of subset. Now, what's cool about it is, Bitcoin exists and it's driving innovation into this stagnant place where they have no incentive to innovate, right? And, you know, we're still paying all this money to send money around the world. We have to wait for three days. It's like a mess. It's a it's total mess. So perhaps they're coming up with systems that are improving the, the banking world, but they're not really using Bitcoin. In fact, they say almost straight away, there is no blockchain. Transaction races are uh, deconflicted using pluggable notaries. A single quarter network may contain multiple notaries that provide their guarantees using a variety of different algorithms. A variety of algorithms. Uh, thus, quarter is not tied to any particular consensus algorithm. Anyone care to tell me what that means? We're not. Bitcoin. I'd like to revisit it. <laughs> we're not. We're not. Well, Bitcoin. yeah, it's. Um, <laughs> well, it's if you've worked in code. if you've worked in technology long <laughs> enough, you've been around like some super smart people that throw around a lot of language that really, um, Coders. D doesn't, d <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, that's my interpretation. The ledger allows for mistakes to be fixed and states to be edited and is stored in an H2 database engine interface with the SQL relational database language. Well, what is the blockchain? It sounds like it's something that's unencryptable and cannot be fucked with. That's when right. That's right. It. Except for this is editable and, uh, as stored in a so database. So like a Wikipedia. But so can't be no, fucked with because there's always a constant. Yeah. Well, the, the, um, the thing here is that what, what is a blockchain? It's really just a database. It's a, it's a very slow, very expensive database. And uh, what they've done here is they've created a, another database, um, one, that, one that can be edited. So it kind of sounds like Oracle to me. But um, yeah. as mentioned before, the state system... ID. We've got to get our fingers in Oh, here's the other interesting thing uh, that they, and, it, and it's, it represents kind of a mindset, the old mindset. You know, when they first created cars, I think they still required you to have a whip in the car, you know, for the horse. <laughs> like that was a law, like you had to have a whip, like even though you're driving a car, because they just couldn't get their head around like the new, yeah, they just didn't, they were trying to map an old system onto a new system. And I think that's. Some form of that is happening here where they were saying R3 seems to want transactions to happen on Corda with full backing of the law. And they're, they're actually taking physical legal documents and hashing them and associating them with, the, with their version of their database. So it's kind of like this, I don't know, may, maybe there's some transition thing that banks need to have before they can get to some world that I can think of where, where Bitcoin is, is working and, but you know, the, the unknown. The summary is you don't really understand what they're trying to say here. Like you don't really understand what the product is yet. It just seems unclear. Is that, yeah. I don't know if you're reading this. Really yeah, yeah, I, I don't either. Um, I, yeah, I think that it's, it's, it's a bit of a mystery. Well, and it, but it's interesting to talk about because they spent millions and millions of dollars and lots of very smart people you know what, 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 what I've really learned since I started uh, thinking about money is there are very, very smart people that can just be, in my opinion, totally misguided. Like it's like they, they point their intellect in the wrong direction or something. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and they, like, <laughs> exactly. like these guys, I mean, this, these guys like probably know way more about the blockchain and, and, and technology than I do. And it's, it's not quite enough. Like, but in my opinion, I mean, I'm like, I have my own point of view, but <laughs> Jeez, 100%. Yeah. You're only left brain. You need yeah. To have your right brain. I read. I read some some Balance. anecdotal thing about uh, a commencement speech at Stanford or 
I think it was a commencement speech, and they said, everybody, you know, you're the smartest people in the, in the entire world. You, know, you look to the left of uh, uh, you, that was the smartest guy in his town. You look to the right of you, that was the smartest guy in your town. And if, if you tried to create a business with the two people sitting next to you, 99.9% of the time it would fail. <laughs> <laughs> Even and, uh, Yeah. And there's, there's something that, uh, I don't know, it's not, it's not enough to be smart. You know, there's got to... It's like we were talking about, like there's got to be a psychological shift. There's got to be some heart involved. Like, you know the, the long-term capital management story, which I thought that was the most ten Nobel Prize winner. They set up a hedge fund that blew up, right? Yeah, like, he's the smartest people in the world. That's a great story. example. Because they were just not brain this. Yeah, well, and they succeeded for a time, and then failed, and failed like, yeah, that was the the first bailout. <laughs> Bail in. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yes, the Bitcoin ETF. <laughs> well, this is, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. And that did, that did happen this year. I don't know if it's quite, um, if it's quite done yet, but ETF, exchange traded fund with Bitcoin backing, could be huge for Bitcoin because it allows institutional investors to get, in, excuse me, get involved. I think that was mentioned in the Wall Street Journal front page that I put up there. Like or but ETFs are also, it's a double-edged sword because, yeah, it could push the price way up and it allows institutional investors to buy Bitcoin, but it's paper Bitcoin. You're investing in the like same it's, system we it's, want to change. It's, well, it's, a, it's an incarnation of, of an old part of the system. And in the present system, those th types of things are used to manipulate prices. Like, if, have you heard about paper gold? Yes. There are gold ETFs. So instead of buying a, a bar of gold and sticking it in your safe, you buy a piece of paper that represents that piece of gold. Okay. And, they, and they make more of those pieces of paper than gold actually exists. And then pretty soon they're pushing paper around. And it, it's, it's not. Fiat gold. It, it's not. Yeah, it's fiat gold. That's, That's right. That's why you have to have your gold. It's. it's it, it seems to happen every time human beings have the chance to do it. <laughs> Hopefully this time it'll be different. Can we please pray the rest of humanity? Wait the fuck up so we don't do this anymore? But anyway, yeah, they're, they're trying to, to create Bitcoin ETFs. And, um, you know, people like Paul Quay and Airbits are trying to make it very easy for you to spend Bitcoin and actually have the genuine Bitcoin on your phone. It's one of the reasons we chose Bitcoin as, or I'm sorry, Airbits as the wallet of choice was because it it stores your Bitcoin keys, but it's encrypted with your password. So not even they know your yeah. password, not even they can access your Bitcoins. So you have you have the bearer instrument and the genuine article. You have the currency and the commodity on your phone. That's another thing humanity has never had before. Usually you Honestly. have usually you have to start um, you know. And if your phone gets stolen? Then you can just uh, you just the download the app again and then enter in your password and mm -hmm. you're good. So a real safe. It is. A it's a, it's a no, new it's, it's a new mm -hmm. set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. Kind of kind of exciting. It's very. It was actually funny because I, I actually said to my friend I forgot my password because it's been so long since I bought my Bitcoin, and it sent me this thing and it said, "Did you really forget your password or do you want to try again?" And you cannot get in. It will not let you in. Unless you know, and if not, it doesn't cut you out, but it gives you a series of questions that you set up that you have to get back in through. Yeah, I like to refer to it as big boy money. <laughs> like big boy pants. Pants. Yeah, you're like, okay, yeah. come on, now, like, saying, no one's, no one's gonna say it. you got to, you got to take responsibility here. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> oh, big, you're a big boy. Oh, you're such a big boy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> look at you. You can, you can remember your own password. There's no, there's no 800 number for Bitcoin. So. <laughs> no. Okay, here, here, uh, you guys stuck around to the end to the to, to get to the conspiracy edition. <laughs> Let's talk about the conspiracy edition. Let, we, we'll, we'll end on this note here, guys. What am I referring to? Well, um, have you noticed we've been talking about the war on cash, and isn't it kind of crazy that it's happening in Sweden and it's happening in. In, uh, in India, yeah. and it's happening, and there are articles from Harvard people, and it, it almost seems like there's some sort of conspiracy. conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I found this article. This is this is I think this is just this guy's blog, but he he found some very interesting information. 
In early November, without warning, the Indian government declared the two largest denomination bills invalid, abolishing over 80% of the circulating cash by value. We know that, right? They're doing that in the U.S. and Australia now, too. Yeah, they're talking about it. Yes, it's happening all over the world. Well, uh, check this out. U.S. President uh, Barack Obama has declared the strategic partnership with India a priority of his foreign policy. China needs to be reined in. In the context of this partnership, the U.S. government's development agency, USAID, which is an NGO, has negotiated cooperation agreements with the Indian Ministry of Finance. And uh, he goes on to, to uncover this press release, which he can find no, no actual links to it. It's just a URL. I, don't, I haven't verified that. That's the conspiratorial uh, <laughs> editing, which I just want to believe. <laughs> um, but this, this came out October 14th. The U.S. Agency for International Development announced today the launch of a new initiative, Catalyst, Inclusive Cashless Payment Partnership. I haven't, gone, I haven't been to this URL. I'm going to check that out. This multi-stakeholder partnership is designed to scale digital payments systems in India, catalyzing an exponential increase in cashless payments in select geographic locations. For me, These locations will be selected based on criteria such as smartphone penetration, the local economy, and administrative feasibility. So you've already got the... Thank you. Thanks for coming. Obviously, <laughs> we got you, got you heated for him. He's out. He doesn't want to be a part of this conspiracy talk. Don't worry. We won't, we won't give you a name. <laughs> Obviously, Ramin Bank, the bank that was giving micro loans, people pissed them off because they were, and that's why they aimed at India because India was changing. Grameen Bank was the first one that started giving micro loans. Obviously, this is why that the banks are starting oh, giving there. I don't know that story, but it sounds like uh, oh, I mean, go ahead there. It, when when people start taking financial transactions into their own hands, my, micro loans, for example, Grameen I think Bank. that makes people very nervous. I mean, there's a lot of power structures wrapped up in loaning money and controlling the issuance of money. And uh, it's also tied up in tax collection, which they've had a problem with in India. But what's interesting here is the involvement of the United States. Like the, it looks like the direct involvement through the, the USAID NGO to engineer a cashless mechanism in India. Which has the name of ATM. That's the system that everybody wound up using. Ah, okay. They switched over. I don't so know if that's that mentioned be an here. Interesting one to follow up on. Yeah. Well, do you know the the origins of this ATM thing? Uh, I do know that it got started, and the government was putting all this advertising out in India well before this occurred. Ah, uh, so they and were pushing. Was going like, what the heck is this? Why do I? Why am I? Why do I care about this? Yeah, and then by and the then whoopsie daisy, like we just not annihilated eighty percent of the money. And then by the end of that phase, actually very rapidly, India took up ATM. It's not dissimilar to uh, Mpesa. Well, you know, we, I was just chatting with someone. I think in the Telegram group or before the 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 episode tonight, and he was he was in India, and he was saying that people don't really care, like they don't really mind, like all those videos we watched a few weeks back about people like jamming into the banks and and security guards like hitting people with canes and things uh, they're they're very tolerant they it's don't a mind population. Yeah. the population the vast majority of people there don't have our and they they right also they also buy into the narrative that it's anti corruption anti black money and they they they're tired of corruption and want to see these things change so i don't well, know some stuff Gold will not be finite in a couple decades. Uh, thank you, Will. Uh, the, the asteroid, <laughs> a, asteroid mining. Uh, uh, he's going to do some asteroid mining. Asteroid mining. That's, yes. that's, that's where all the Australian miners can go. They can go no do some kidding. asteroids. It's absolutely possible. The <laughs> Mars journey. Yeah. And Mark will um, lose confidence ahead of what? Oh, that's, that's what. Sorry. Uh, where's my mouse? There it is. <laughs> Yeah, see what he's doing. Underneath Let's see, your market, markets will lose confidence. Yeah. Uh, uh, talk about conspiracy theories, Willie. Come on, man. Let's keep it. Let's keep it uh, real. <laughs> Dude. Yo, <laughs> bro, uh, All right, guys. Let's see here. Um, that's about all the time we have. I'm going to just remind you that um, 
We're in Ubud. We're here in Ubud. If you if you come to Bali, for those people online, if you come to Bali, we want to see you at Ubud. We get together every Tuesday at Ubud. You can find details at ubud.org. There's even air conditioning. Um, we we are on Twitter hashtag Bitcoins in Bali. You can talk to us there or on the Telegram group. Um, don't forget we've got Bitcoin 101 that's happening in two weeks, Saturday, January 24th, 10 a.m. sharp. Send us your noobs. 14th. The fourth. The fourth. What did I say? 24th. Okay. Yeah. Yes, January. Before I said July. I can't um, believe it's been like over a year. To I must get be to getting old. Jan- I'll just read it. January 14th, 2017, 10 a.m. Uh, right. Make sure you register. Let us know you're going to be there. Uh, Join us on um, yes, we, when we're not together, we get together on Facebook. We've also got a, uh, a Facebook group, the Bitcoins in Bali Facebook group. And we've also got Bitcoins in Bali.org. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to put up the show notes, all the links from tonight's episode and, and more. We're going to get our act together in 2017. Um, but don't forget, we'll be back here Tuesday night. We do it every Tuesday, 5 PM local time. Thanks for coming tonight, guys. We'll see you next Tuesday. Happy all right. Woo! Uh, I've been here for every year, but I've never.